Hello once again our most valid student my name is Confident and welcome to my revision session with you where I'm looking at uh, engineering science this is N3 and we are looking at the topic of electricity today and I just pulled out one of the questions actually it's gonna be in two parts there is this question I'm going to do uh, for this lesson so I just want you to stay tuned it's out of uh, 13 marks so how do you approach such a question in your engineering science and three well guess what electricity is electricity you can prepare it even for you guys who are doing your grade 12 this is also relevant because n3 and grade 12 is equivalent in a way and then also in the second part of this video so i'm gonna just to do two videos is this one i liked this one you know what um the examiner here i i, I applaud him because the way these resistors are set up, hmm, they leave something uh, a lot to be desired. You need to get hold of the second part also. So don't lose me. Stay tuned until the end of the video and make sure that you watch the two part series of electricity uh, as we prepare for our exams. Now, let's look at the first question. It says define the term ampere. Amperes, uh, what will you define? What is ampere? Ampere. Remember, this ampere is the unit of what? It is the unit of current. It's the unit of current used to measure the rate of flow of current or electricity. In a way, I'm using this formula I is equal to Q over change in time. You know, there is this formula there. It says uh, what is current? Uh, the one ampere is uh, is the um, is the measure of one coulomb of charge flowing uh, in a in a second. You know, its rate uh, is the rate. That's why they say the rate of flow of charge is one coulomb of charge flowing per second that is uh, one ampere uh, but guys whenever i come to definitions i'm also horrible like you you know you need to cram this you master this but more importantly get hold of your test book what i'm interested in is something that can maybe give you some confusion on how you approach it is the 7.2 so let's look at this one it says three cells each with an emf of three volts so we have got an emf down here we have got three cells you see they said emf equal to so there are three so you can see that um it does make sense already to say three cells each one is an emf of three volts and then the other one is three volts and then the other one is three volts does it make sense so it's three volts three volts three volts now already you can see the total emf is three plus three plus three which is what which is nine volts you see they don't give you that information but it's expected that you know that because they're saying three cells each way with an emf of three volts and an internal resistance of 0 0.5 so each one of these cells has an internal resistance of 0 0.5 ohms so if it's three of them so you multiply by what by three you will find the internal resistance i'll use small r which is what which is 1,5 ohms again this is information that is expected for you to extract from the text they are saying internal resistance are connected in series with an external with the external circuit shown in figure five so by saying external circuit they are talking about everything outside you see now the first question says calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit the equivalent and then they gave it four marks now when they are talking about equivalent resistance they are looking at the resistance of the whole circuit including the one of the internal resistance so equivalent don't forget also here is part of it so how do you go about that whenever we are dealing with our resistance i always tell my students to say first follow the flow of current now my current i always use is the conventional current whereby i'm saying this is positive 
and the back is negative so you know that but the conventional current one remember is not the actual flow of current because current flows from negative to positive but just to maintain the conventional uh, setup we are going to say current is flowing from positive there is our current this is our total current here it it's going up that's our i total current it's going up when it goes here it will enter there that's our total current i think that so it will enter into this 0, 0.1 resistor and then it will also come out that's our still our current here our total current but now when it comes here into these other three resistors look what is going to happen it's got that point it's got that point and it's got that point it won't go to a voltmeter remember current doesn't go in through a voltmeter because it is infinite resistance that's why voltmeter is connected in parallel so now it will go to the 6 ohm 3 ohm 9 ohm so there is the current there the current there and the current there we say the current splits so we can call it maybe this one i6 i can call this one i3 i can call this one i9 when current split like that it means these three resistors are in parallel all right so after that the same current will come out come out come out and it will come and join back there so when it comes out here and comes down it is back to our total current again you see that because remember current in through a loop into a loop and current outside the loop is uh, is the same this is um Kirchhoff's law so when current enters and current comes out it will be the same current hence it entered here into this parallel combination so when it entered what did it do it split and then after that it is going to combine back you see back to our it so it will pass through the ammeter as the total current it goes through this 2 ohm uh, resistor as your total current and back to the what to the cell as the total current so now when you're finding the to, uh, what you call this the total resistance which is the equivalent resistance first of all you have to consider the parallel circuit so which means these volts 6 3 and 9 I'm just going to do them like this. We must consider them first. Actually, I'm not going to draw them because they're already drawn. But you know the formula. What it says is 1 over what? Uh, 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Because there are 3, I can use that. But now, which is 1 over RT, please don't say RT, keep on saying 1 over. That's where most of you make an error. Don't forget that this continues as 1 over. Some of you, this is what you do. After writing the formula so well, then you say RT is equal to, and then you do this to say now 1 over 3, was it 6? Let me see, it's what? It's 6, 3, 9. So you start writing 1 over 6 uh, here plus. 1 over 3 plus 1 over 9. Some of you do this. It's still correct on the right hand side, but you don't forget that you are still having this as, you see, you didn't follow up. It was 1 over, going here is now RT. How did it become like that? So don't forget, you still continue here and maintain it as what? As 1 over. Now, to make your life simpler, please, this is what you do. You can then say, therefore, as I say, some of you make errors. You can say, therefore, RT, from here, you're allowed to write RT, is equal to, then I can just say 1 over, and then you start saying 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 9. All right. This thing that I did whereby this one over is gone has been taken care of on that it's mathematics here uh, you mustn't uh, struggle yourself here you can do it your own way but remind yourself if you want to get rt straight you just say one over and then you repeat the same fractions it will give you an answer straight away hence i wrote rt here then when i do that it will be what it's remember it's fraction one over and then you put your fractions down as uh, 1 over 6 plus what? 
plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 9. Right. Say to give my answer straight, which is that, which is 1.636. Let's maintain 3 decimal place. 1.636. You can round off, shift, set up, 6, and into 3 decimal place. SD, 1.636. 1.6. 1.636 now don't forget the unit is what is ohms are you with me so that is the part that you need to be um very very aware of let me that's not a negative sign okay that is the what i don't want to call it rt actually because it, it will confuse like total current let's call it r parallel let's use p here where there is t let me use P, all right, so for parallel, for parallel, and for parallel, and parallel. So that we got the resistance for the parallel circuit. Now, you've got a new cell, and that cell is simpler like this. You've got 0, 0,1 in the solution of that, so it becomes like this. We have got now a new cell, which is like this. I'm just going to, this is a sketch, I'm not taking time now. Let's see that and from there you got something like a, a resistor somewhere there and then from there you got your cell okay okay let me make them there were there were three so let me just make them the three of them like that I wanted to ignore them like that all right but now in this cell in as much as we are having cells, let me forget about these cells. Let me actually have my resistor here. You will know why I'm doing that with a different color. And then let's ignore the rest and then do this, you know. So this is what you are having, whereby here you have got your 0 0.1 from the diagram. Remember 0 0.1, then you got the total of this parallel combination. It became 1.636 here 1.636 okay and then that's what happened and then from there you got these two ohms you see I'm just focusing on the resistors they've got the two ohms and then after that you got this internal resistance here that small r which is 1 comma 5 are you seeing that so it's very important for you to have that because they say it equivalent resistance so now when you're talking about equivalent equivalent resistance what you are saying you are saying the total resistance including the internal resistance that's where now we are going to write your rt is equal to your total remember it's in series now which is rs which is same as rs actually but let me not say that this r1 plus r2 plus r3 plus blah 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 plus uh, maybe up to rn whatever case which is equal to then you're going to have your 0 0.1 1 1.636 plus 2 plus 1.5 you know why we're saying they're in series look if we just focus on current going through current comes here the same current goes there the same current comes here the same current goes into that one you see there is no change in the current passing on all these resistors so if current is uniform across it means all of them they are not they are in series then from there you can then focus on adding which is 0 0.1 plus 1.636 plus 2 plus 1.5 all right then when you do that that is now the equivalent resistance which is 5.236 5.236 what ohms that's your total resistance which is your equivalent resistance guys that's what you do when you're answering that part it made it formats so i'm taking a bit of time but i just wanted to show you that now the other ones becomes quick easier because of you have managed to do the heavy lifting of this total resistance the first one is the reading on the ammeter there is our ammeter here and we want to find out what is the reading now remember it's total current it 
that is coming through so if it's it coming to through it means also you are using resistance must be rt are you seeing that and voltage must be vt so you come back to that formula uh it's a common formula you have but uh the one that i'm going to use you just quickly remind yourself of this triangle oh, no. this is a common triangle for you that you must always you know this triangle which is what v i and r you know so it connects voltage current and resistance so in this case they want current so what is current current is voltage over resistance so if total current it's total voltage voltage over total resistance then i can come back and say but my total voltage what is total voltage did they give me total voltage if it's vt it means it's your emf always remember the total voltage there is represented by that emf where they say it it's three cells each with an emf of three volts are you with me so now what you do you are going to say now i've got my vt you can actually say it's my emf over my rt still the same which is equal to the emf is nine over total resistance which is 5.236 remember then from here you will get your total current into this thing so it comes your 9 over 5.236 all right which is equal to there is the total current 7.18869 round off shift setup and then you've got number six and then you're rounding off to three decimal places then it's 1.719 1.719 1.719 what amps remember current is measured in amps so guys that is how you get that this is two marks next one it says the reading on the voltmeters v1 and v2 let's go and identify v1 and v2 look at v1 v1 as a voltmeter is in the parallel combination now remember this look at this the current that is entering i mean that is why it's interested look at the current entering the what the parallel combination it's your total current you see it it entered there so if it's it that entered so we are here in a way uh, where is my other diagram we are here we added that and it gave us this remember that parallel combination it was this answer if you still remember whatever we did on the parallel this became that so we are saying it that current is entering there it's it uh, let me just look at use another uh, like this i t the total current is coming in and it is coming out i just wrote i i but now you can use that to your advantage because there is something i just want to show you let's find let's say i've got my r and my i so you use this formula use this formula so now we are looking now the question remember it says what it says the reading on the voltmeter so it means i need voltage so on this same uh, triangle how do you find the voltage it's v is equal to what i times r right and then don't forget my i became it we agreed that it was it that entered into this parallel combination and what about r r was a, your, our rp so we want to find the current i mean the voltage in all these uh, resistors so which is equal to i was 1.719 times rp you still remember it was what it was uh, 1.636 which is 1.636 let's multiply this if you multiply this and the answer you're going to get let's i just i'm going to explain it further 719 times 1.636 look at this 2.812 comma 812 now it's volts remember they said voltage this is volt now it's in the parallel i can call it vp is the parallel guess what something interesting whatever voltage i got look how it's connected it's connected in what it's connected in parallel to the all the three different 
resistors because voltmeter any of them will have the same reading so you connect it across the three if they're in parallel the voltage for the nine ohms and the voltage for the three ohms and the voltage for the six ohms is the same voltage are you getting it so if i can find you my v across six is equal to my v across three which is equal to my v across nine which is equal to my v1 you understand so that's how you you just go about calculating uh, that that part here all right that's how you go about calculating that and then the next question here it says the current through the what okay the reading on the voltmeters were not done v1 and v2 v2 is also simpler it's it look at it it's coming in here it's it and then we've got two ohms so you come here and say what is my it again you use that uh v2 is equal to it times what is the resistor it's across the two ohms so we are going to say r2 because we didn't have that uh I've seen that which is equal to current was 1 comma 719 times the resistance there was 2 and then it will give us the answer for that particular because uh, they said across which is 1 comma 719 times 2 then it becomes what 3 comma 438 which is 3.438 again volts are you getting that so that's how you find these two answers v2 but here i don't want to change this you don't want to make it vp let's call it v1 because they said let's calculate v1 guys is it making sense i hope so next question last one it says current through the three ohm resistor where is the three ohm let me erase a few things here so that it doesn't uh, you're able to see this look the current i called it i3 is coming through the what the three ohm resistor what is interested e, interesting here is the current i want to find out but the voltage is the same remember i was telling you to say v1 is equal to v6 which is equal to v3 here so we know the voltage is the one that i calculated so now if i know the voltage and i know the what the resistance again i use this table this one because they want the current all right so what question was that this question now just not to confuse now it's 7.2.4 so in 7.2.4 to find the current you use the same formula i is v over r you see but we call it i3 now because it's passing through the 3 ohm it's v3 over r3 right which is equal to we know the voltage it is that voltage which they called it v1 remember now when we started v1 is linked to what v1 is linked to v3 it's the same so v1 is equal to v3 so here we are going to say just as a reminder v1 is equal to v3 which is equal to what that's what we calculated as 2.812 here 2.812 volts so that's what we use here which is 2.812 over r3 which is 3 ohms then you're going to get your current now when you do that it will give us the current now which is 2.812 over 3 and then what do we get we get 0 0.937 here 0 0.9 Three, seven, but current is in amps are you with me it's so interesting just want to this is of course it's like it's it's more like um i'm going beyond this lesson this was the way the answers you needed but look at it what if i find the current that goes through i6 and i9 into this parallel combination just let's do that i'm gonna put it in red your answer is done i just want to show you now something interesting now the uh, i six it will follow the same thing the the voltage doesn't change which is two comma eight one two but now over six and i nine is equal to two comma eight one two remember voltage is the same across remember we said v one 
is equal to v3 which is equal to v6 which is equal to v9 see that but now over 9 let's find this current here i6 will be equal to what current in that goes through 6 is 2,812 actually it's like this 2,812 over 6 equal to and then it's 0 0.4686 so if I round off here uh, to 3 decimal place I'm getting what 0, 469 you see 0, 0,469 0 0.469 what about the i9 it will give me what so the i9 will be 2,812 okay I'm, I want this 2,812 over 9 and then it gives me what 0 0.312 we are measuring current all of them is what it's amps now 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 i told you here that the current that goes in look at it i3 i i6 i3 i9 when it comes out it will combine back again so when it comes out it it becomes back to it so look at it if you add these currents now that we're calculating i add i3 plus i6 plus i9 let's add them what are we getting so that you can just have an idea what's happening here so i've got 0 0.937 plus 0 0.469 plus what 0 0.312 for adding these currents equal to and then we get 1.718 1.718 1 amps now look at this number is the it that we get let's go for it then 1.719 this is 19 this is 1.718 it's just because of the rounding off here you see that just missed it but it's the same it which is 1.7 if you are rounding off to two decimal places it will be one point this one will be 1.72 amps and then you come and round off to two decimal places here it will be also equal to 1.72 amps you see this so that means that's why we're confirming confirming Kirchhoff's law current entering into a loop I mean yes into a loop or into a branch is equal to the current coming out but that's how we're confirming that the voltage mustn't change same V same V but current splits it means they are in power so guys that was that so now going forward going forward going forward i'm going to do part two of this video now on this one trust me you don't want to miss this this is important it almost confused me also you know what it made me think and i redid it and i redid it just to confirm so i've got different approaches of this one so i just want you to stay tuned to the next lesson and see how i approached this question you guys if you're not subscribed you are missing out a lot this channel has you in mind it is the 24 minute lesson and it is targeting the underdog and then who's the underdog the underdog is the person who says i'm struggling but i know given enough time and enough lessons and things that are so clear i can get a distinction here so you are my student you are the one that i'm looking for I believe in the underdog because the underdog sometimes despised sometimes taken for granted he becomes the man becomes the lady you know so if you know that you're struggling i'm here for you and i hope oh, i wish you all the best so let's stay tuned for the next lesson thank you